Hello everyone and welcome to another Casting Networks live stream. Our guest today has helped cast over 80 films and television shows over his nearly 30 year career. He is well known for his work on Yellowstone, the high school musical movies and series, and Andy Mack. He's also worked on numerous award-winning independent films and is Utah's top casting professional. Please welcome Jeff Johnson. Hi. Hey. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. Um, give me one sec. And uh, my first question for you, Jeff, is how did you get started in casting? Oh, wow. I'll give you the short version be long. Um, basically, I was um, an actor, and I interned at a, a casting office and kind of ropes. I was going to become a casting director at the time, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, this casting director that I worked with, I was in Utah at the time, and the casting director I worked with, she moved away. And this producer called me about six months later and said, hey, I want you to cast my next movie because he couldn't find anybody he liked. So I did it and started doing it from there. So, and then it just built. I mean, people found out I did it and it kind of kept going and I've been doing it for over 26 years now. It's been crazy. That's a long time to be casting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that you're known for is, is doing the local casting for the high school musical movies and series. Uh, if we go back to the first high school musical movie made for the Disney Channel back in 2006, um, it felt like it kind of came out of nowhere, uh, but became this phenomenon once it aired. Uh, were you surprised by that success and, and how, how much that took off? I think everybody was. I mean, you know, the, the, you know we did it on a budget for a movie of the week for Disney Channel. And, uh, you know, so it was, uh, it was kind of a, you know, low budget, kind of put it together, you know, do the best you can. And, and uh, it just took off. And everybody, I think still to this day, people are amazed about that that was you know that the la casting people did an amazing job with the casting from la and then the locals just they seemed to click within it and it went really well it's, it was amazing i mean to this it's like who who knew at that time we had no idea and then it you know ended up it, there were sequels and now you have the series yep. so it's just it was this uh you know little tv movie that just kind of took off and had legs of its own and you know launched careers of Zac Efron and, and Vanessa Hudgens. So it's, it's insane how, how much that took off. Um, I know. It was amazing. So how, Still to this day, it's still amazing how, how it's still going. So How is uh, casting a movie musical different from all the other projects you've done? You know, it's, it's funny. Um, it's, it's the same but different. Um, you know, most, most of the stuff that I the local hires, so the people I do, they don't have to sing. So I pretty much am looking for people who can dance and act, which is nice. Um, it, it makes it easier for me. But, you know, the dance auditions are a whole other deal. And the choreography, the choreographers, they deal with all that. They deal with the dancers. But you also have to find actors who can dance. And that's kind of interesting sometimes. Because sometimes they can't. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so I get to sit in with the dance auditions because... You know, I get to bring in actors into the dance audition who say they can dance, and we try to figure out how well they can dance. So, and uh, it's fun to watch them go through that. And some of them can really do it. Some of them are amazing, and some of them can kind of do it. You know, so <laughs> it's pretty cool that way. Yeah. Did you have to? I mean, but basically, that's the same. It's the same process. It's just you add the dance factor into it. You know, and 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 go through that, and make sure that they can at least move the way they need to. You know. So. Yeah, it's got to be tricky because, you know, you want someone, obviously, who can act, but then you, yeah. they might need to sing, they might need to dance, yep. and ideally they can do all three, and that's hard to do. Um, and triple threats are hard to come by, but you can find them. <laughs> yeah. there, there are some out there. There's some amazing people out there. Um, wanted to talk about just casting in, uh, in Utah in general. Um, okay. What are the biggest challenges when trying to cast outside a major city like LA and New York, when you're trying to cast here in Utah? And you know, one of your biggest problems in, in doing any kind of regional casting, and, and that's mostly what I do is basically regional casting, um, is, is depth. Um, we have some really, really good actors in Utah and really good actors, but there's just not a lot of them. 
So in Los Angeles, I have cast in Los Angeles and I have actually cast in New York. And and you just you can keep bringing people in and keep bringing people in because you've got, you know, people to choose from as far as people pursuing acting. But uh, eventually in a regional market, you get to the point where there's nobody else pursuing acting. You don't have any way you're, you're, you're grasping at straws, especially in different diversities and different things of that you're trying to find. So sometimes you're sometimes you're actually reading real people going, I hope you can say this line, you know, that kind of thing. So it, 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 it you know, some, sometimes you get to the point where you're, you're, you're like getting desperate to try to find that role. So it's just a matter of depth. Uh, uh, there are some amazing actors in all regions, but it's just a matter of how many people are still are acting. Uh, do you feel like smaller markets are more competitive or less competitive than a than a big market? More and competitive in what sense? Is if, as far as actors go? Yeah, as far as an actor, but and um, you know. It, you know, I think that they're more competitive in the sense that there's fewer roles for actors. There's fewer jobs ongoing. You know, in a smaller market, there's less jobs for the actors, but, but which is also for the actor because a lot of times, if you're any good and you've been really working your your craft and, and learning your what you need to do, you can book a lot and kind of build some kind of you know a resume before you go off to a bigger market. So I think it kind of works both ways. I think. In a general, that it's you know it's competitive no matter where you go. Yeah, um, I think Utah's a unique market. Uh, yeah, it's different. I mean, there's all sorts of uh, markets all across the U.S. What's life like for an actor in Utah? You know, most of the actors in Utah they do it. They you know like in, in a lot of places um, they have a other they have another job they pay their bills with and then they pursue acting. In, you know, they can. They do a lot of plays, a lot of voiceovers. There's a lot of commercials. Utah has a big commercial market. So they do everything they can to just kind of pay their bills. So there are actors who just do acting in Utah and they, and they make it. But it, it, it's, it, it's difficult sometimes, especially, you know, like times like now when every, nothing's going on. Yeah. But, um, but they, they, you know, they, they have to kind of be a jack of all trades, which is very difficult sometimes. They have to be able to do the gamut. There's a lot of actors who do books on tape out here, and they, they do the, the voice work for books on tape and that kind of thing. So uh, pretty much do everything and anything they can do to act. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, and it, it makes sense because while there's definitely, like you said, a lot of commercials, there's film and yeah. TV, there's stuff that comes through, but... It's a smaller market, so you you have to be able to sustain yourself. So it, it, I'm sure it's tricky to have that balance of, you know, I, I yeah. want to act, but I also need to pay the bills. So you know, yeah, you so they, they find both. a balance, and, and most of them they, they find a really good balance, and they get to do you know what they want. You know, a lot a lot of the local guys they do they, the the hard part is you get a big project in, and you know one of your one of your top actors in that category is doing a play. And it's like, well, they're not available anymore. So that, that's always a difficulty. <laughs> yeah. But back to work. They, they have to work. So. Right. Um, what's something that you wish, talking about going back to you, what is something you wish more actors understood about your job and, and what you do as a casting director? In, in a local market, they, um, an, a, it tends to be that actors don't understand really kind of the definition of what I do. Um, I think I wish the, the, the main thing I wish is that people understand as a casting director, we want you to be the role. We want you to be it. When you walk in that door, if we've actually brought you in and we're actually seeing you, we have some hope for you getting that role and we want you to be it. Now we have constraints we deal with number one is you to fit the script and hopefully at the pipe by the point you coming into the room you do fit the script but then you have like the director's vision you know do, do you fit what the director's looking do you fit what you know and we're putting a puzzle together because now you, we're also casting you know your wife or your daughter or your you know at the same time and they have to all match and have to all fit so in the end it's not personal we, we we're literally just trying to fit a puzzle together and make sure that it works for the production for the director so yeah it's a it's a tricky process it's um, yeah it's stressful there's a lot involved but we are it, definitely voting for you i mean as a casting director we we want you to be the yeah first off it makes our jobs a lot easier 
Um, but second off, it's like we, we really don't bring you in to waste your time. We bring you in because we think you have a shot at getting that role. Yeah. It's like, it's like we always talk about is that casting is rooting for you. It makes you look good when they look good. So, um, are there things with, uh, this local market that you wish you could change or is there anything that, um, I wish, I mean, I, we do, we do, we get pretty good work here. Um, I wish it was. I wish there was more. I wish there's more opportunities because, you know, um, we 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 tend to be consistent on the in commercials and in industrials and things like that. And we do get a pretty good deal amount of a pretty good amount of, uh, you know, series and and uh, and even independent film. But I wish it was more I, I like any market. You wish they had more opportunity. I wish the actors had more opportunities. I really do. Yeah. And uh, I it, it feels like in smaller markets that tends to kind of go up and down like there might be a peak where there's you know more stuff going on all at once and there might be that lull for a while um so that's you know another challenge that i'm sure a lot of the actors that are watching now that live in these uh small to medium markets are are familiar with as well yeah um so when you've been doing anything mm -hmm. even beyond casting for 30 years i feel like you tend to develop pretty strong instincts uh, but has there been a moment in casting where your instincts were off and an actor came in and surprised you? Like maybe you had a particular idea of maybe what this actor could do and then they come in and, and surprise you with something else? Absolutely. I mean, I think the main thing is, I mean, you, you, you know, I, of course, you know, we, it, to me, it's a creative process. And we start with bringing in people we know, bringing in people that we know are good, trying to see people who we know are coming along or, 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 uh, you know, especially in a regional market or people that we have never met before that the agents really like are pushing saying, Hey, these people are really good. And then we try to kind of fit this puzzle together. And sometimes most of the time, almost every project I work on, somebody comes in and surprises me and somebody comes in and it's like, wow, I didn't know about this, about this actor. And so, you, and that's what you got to be open to as a casting person is finding those, you know, especially in a regional market, finding those little gems that you didn't know somebody could do. And they come in and they, they, they and you, you, a lot of times they'll come in and it's like, oh, you know what? Um, I know you read for this role. Let's see if you can read for this role. Do you want to come back in a couple of days and read for this other role? Because I think you might fit it. And it happens all the time that somebody just surprises you. So, I mean, again, it's a creative process. That's why we run the sessions. That's why we do what we do is we're actually trying to find the, you know, let the actor be what they're going to be in the, in the role. It, 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 you don't know. I mean, I wish I could just every time I read a script go, oh, I just need to bring in so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, and I'm done. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So because of that, because you've been surprised, um, do you find that like maybe an actor has a particular type? Maybe they're always playing the yeah. villain or they're always that, that goofy neighbor guy. Um, do you find yourself bringing in an actor that is against their type um, often? All, all the time. Yeah. Uh, in a regional market, you want to bring in the best possible talent. And a lot of times you take risks. And a lot of times you're casting off type completely because you know it's a you know it's either a difficult um, it's, it's a difficult thing to find in the state, or or you basically know that the actor's really good and you want to try to cast off type because they really seem to be you know they really seem to book and they really seem to be really good at what they do. So you're always looking for that. Um, you, you, stereotypes are hard to do in a regional market because. You can't stereotype everybody into a role because you need good actors no matter what. <laughs> yeah. So you're always trying to bring those in. The well-trained, good actors, are, are you're always trying to get them in the door. So it, You touched on this a second ago um, regarding collaborations uh, with Los Angeles. So you yeah. do that a lot. You'll often collaborate yeah. with casting directors in L.A. or in other cities to find that right person for the role. Uh, what can a local actor do to give themselves an advantage? Well, I mean, a local actor has an advantage in the sense that most of the time productions don't, you know, if they can find it in the local market, they want to keep it. It's a lot cheaper to keep, a, you know, to hire a local actor out of that market. They would prefer that. Um, so that's number one is understand you already kind of have an advantage. But the other advantage is you know, that what you can do is really just train, get get good training under your belt, make sure you're working on good projects, you know. 
build your reputation too, because there's a lot of times, uh, you know, I've worked on, you know, over the years, I've worked on it with the same producers and they'll come back in and they'll want to see some of the actors that worked on our last project because they loved them so much. So mm. just build that reputation because you can actually start booking. And, and, and you, most, not all projects, but most projects that come into a regional, um, into a region, um, they, they're worried that they can't find talent. They, they're literally worried. They're like, ooh, can we find any of this here? Yeah. And they want to find it. And so and so what you have to do is make sure that, first off, you're very professional. Make sure you're up to date on all your resumes, all your headshots, make, you know, because that's all they're looking for as a professional actor. And so if they find it out of Utah or they find it out of Nevada or Idaho, they don't care as long as they find it and it works. What happens a lot is, um, you know, a lot of times the L.A. casting has already, you know, they've got their name actors involved. They've got their name actors attached and they've got, you know. And so by the time I get it, I'm not reading for those upper, you know, the, the, the one, two and three on the call sheet. I'm reading for below that. I'm reading for other lines. And so a lot of times actors want to know how you do that. Well, that's a lot bigger process and you have to, you know, draw an audience and you have to have investors say that you, you're good for an audience. There's a whole other thing there. <laughs> so... Um, can you talk about that a little bit in terms of collaborations with Los Angeles? So if you're, sure. um, you know, you're working with a casting director in LA, you're, yeah. you might be both looking for that exact same role and, and how that works, how you communicate with each other, how, uh, yeah. you know, it's funny that, that, you know, it basically is a collaboration. We, we, a lot of times we share the videos of the actors that we're looking at. A lot of times we'll say, you know, a lot of times a, a Los Angeles casting director who will be basically the lead on the show, the, the, the Los Angeles, you know, or the New York casting director will be doing the main bigger parts and they'll have a list of parts they'd like to get locally. And I'll come up and say, hey, um, I have a couple people that should read for this part. Are you cool? And they're totally cool. They want to see what they can get out of Utah. And so it, it really is just communication between casting people. And, a lot, and sometimes the casting people say, no, um, the director already had somebody. We've already got that person. So, so we're not going to read that. But, you know, it is. It's just communication. Um, you know, most of the casting directors I've worked with are ter out, of, out of state are terrific. They, you know, they just, they just want to cast a good movie. So they're looking for the best talent wherever they can get it. So, yeah, yeah. And then there's times that, you know, there's times that we, we can't find exactly that certain ethnicity or that certain age range that they need um, for the role. And we end up having to go to L.A. or Los An or New York for that. Or, and it, it does happen. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's all markets, you know, that at the end of the day. They, uh, they, hold on. I've lost your um, I, one second. I've got technical to get difficulties. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you now. Yeah, sorry, okay, I didn't good. hear that last thing. <laughs> uh, I, it wasn't important. No, um, I was just going to say that that's the case in a lot of markets, right? Like they're ultimately yeah. just trying to find the right role. And um, if they can do that locally, like you said, they're yeah. great. But sometimes, you know, you can't find that particular that particular yeah. person. So yeah. it, it's um, how that works. Um, yeah. Want to go into some questions that got emailed in. So okay. uh, I thought this was an interesting one. Um, should I get a personal acting coach or take group classes? So this was actually specifically talking about um, I want to act better for commercials. Um, so should I get one-on-one uh, -on -one acting or should I take a class with a group? Uh, you know, and that's difficult for me to answer in the sense of I don't know where this person is in their career. But absolutely... You know, the, you, you should train whatever it is. If you're not, if you if you feel like you you're not booking and you you should be taking some kind of class or getting some kind of tweak or, or you know getting some kind of feedback about what you're doing. Um, you know, and it, it is also going to be who you're training with. Like you know, make sure that they're qualified. Make sure that they know what they're talking about. Make sure that they have you know they have experience. Don't don't just you know. Um, personal coaching, you know, definitely it needs to be with some highly trained people, you know, that really know what they're talking about. I, I, uh, my thing is, is you, you know, you, you got to train, but then you got to get in your feet and do it too. You've got to, you, you absolutely have to be acting whenever you can and wherever you can play. If you, if you don't feel like you're booking anything, you know, get on your feet and do something on stage that will that will get you over your stage fright you know that kind of stuff so there's just always be acting is probably my best advice but 
again, I don't know specifically where that person is, so I wouldn't be able to recommend that without knowing, you know, where they're at in their career or having evaluated them in any way. That's fair. Um, another question is how much TV film production is there in Utah? Maybe I'll reword that a little bit. Are you seeing um, more TV film production in Utah? Well, I, obviously not right this second, but well, it, right it, now we're not seeing much <laughs> at all. But um, I mean, that one's easy for right now. But um, uh, you know, it's it, it can like in the '90s it was really busy, and then it dropped off um, because of tax incentives, and then got a tax incentive and we built our tax incentive and work has been picking up a year after year after year after year and hopefully it keeps going that way so it is getting busy you know we're not as we're not as busy as you know some of the other states that have these way out there tax incentives but we do we keep pretty busy and we keep working like i said i'd love to see it even more i'd love to see it even busier but uh you know we we do consistently work utah gets a lot of work that's awesome um are you taking generals right now? You know, I I started once we got into to the Oh sorry, Jeff, I think I lost your connection. Are you, are yeah, you there? I I think we lost you for a second. The joys of live streaming. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I saw a lost connection on this thing. Are you taking generals um, right now is the question. Yeah. So I am taking generals, but I'm kind of booked out for the next two months. I'm only doing a few a week because, you know, I want to be fair. So um, I am taking generals, but, you know, I won't be booked, seeing anybody that hasn't already booked for the next couple months. So and I'm literally doing it just to just to get to know some actors while we're in lockdown and while just so I can see new actors and people I don't know very well. So. Um, in regards to self-taping, do you recommend always turning in a tape a little earlier than the actual deadline? Do CDs generally start making decisions as soon as tapes come in and not pay as much attention to tapes sent right at the deadline? You know, I mean, we the deadline's there for a reason. It's literally the deadline. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I, you know, we're going to watch anybody that gets the tape in before the deadline or at the deadline. Um, so I don't think there's any wrong, I don't think that you have to get them in earlier. I mean, if I can, I try to start watching tapes early, but that doesn't mean I make my decisions early. I just try to start going through tapes because I can. But the reason we have a deadline, usually the way we set it up is we have the deadline so that we have time to go through tapes and figure out what, you know, and before we get it out to the client or before we bring people in for live auditions, depending on what we're doing with that. So, um, you know, my answer would be by the deadline's fine. You don't need to worry about that. Just get in by the deadline. If you're getting it late and the day after, make sure you call your and get permission because I get a lot of times where I, I need to get this out to my client that night. It's literally the day we get our tapes. And so I'm going through tapes as fast as I can and then I send them off to the client. The client's already reviewing them and they've made their decision by the next morning and I get, a, I get two tapes from actors that morning and it's like, uh, I can't do anything with this now. I, I, you can't get this job because you didn't get your tape in. So it's more about being late than anything. Try to get your tapes in in time. So. Great. Good advice. Um, can you explain what a local hire means? If I have a friend in Utah that I can stay with, can I submit to your casting? Um, can I participate? How does that work? So that's a little complicated. Um, as far as the union is concerned, if it's a union show, you can't just come in and work as a local. You you have to be, you know, you have to live in that place. Or if, And if we're bringing you in, we need to fly you and we need to put you up and things like that. That's that's union rules. Um, as far as 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 far as the state goes, there's a little bit of complication there, too, is you don't get tax incentive in the state of Utah unless you hire a certain amount of local actors. It's, it's really a, a minimal amount, but it, they, they actually have to have some kind of amount of local actors hired. Um, and so we have to make sure people have driver's licenses, you know, in order to qualify for take state tax incentives. So that's the other thing. Um, but as far as like non-union shows and stuff, and a lot of times, a lot of times, like we'll hire people out of Idaho, we'll hire people out of Nevada, people who are nearby all the time. It happens all the time. Um, but that's going to be up to you on those non-union shows, whether or not you can put yourself up, whether or not you want to do that. And 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 so I don't really like to do that to people because it ends up costing the actors money. 
um, you know, the money that, it, you know, to put themselves up or to come in. But a lot of times actors are willing to do it. If you have a place, like if you have a place in Utah that you live and things like that, it's a different story. So, but again, union rules are you, you, you need to be put up and you need to be flown in. So you're actually not, you, if you are working as a local and you're not from that place, you're actually actually going against the union rules. Great. Um, now we can go right into the Q&A section. So we have a lot of people asking you questions. I saw this okay. question that I... I actually want to ask you myself. So this is from Vincent. Um, can you talk about working with John Papsidera for Yellowstone? Oh, John's awesome. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, those guys are great. They're they work like easy. Um, it's been a it's been a joy actually. I got to be honest. With you. Uh, you know, I get to you know, I'm pretty much on the phone with his office. You know, on a weekly basis when we're doing the series. So and uh, and he's great to work with. I, that's probably the best. I've actually never met him in person because we just do everything on the phone, but he's, he seems great to work with. So, Awesome. I have so many questions that it's, uh, you know, I'm going to try to go through as many as I can. Um, yeah. Let's see. This is a question. So from Erica... As an actor, it's a challenge for me to stay motivated sometimes. All the work goes along with it. Does it get that for you as a casting director that it's hard to stay motivated? You know, I, I think, I think it's, it, with anything, you get burned out sometimes. And so you always have to make sure you things to get a release. You know, it, um, I love what I do, but it can get overwhelming when you're doing it so much that you don't do any uh, and you don't have any personal time or you don't have any time with family or friends or loved ones. So I do get to that point. But it, as long as I can have those breaks and take some time off, I'm fine. Um, but I think with anything, you have to have a release from it. You can love acting. Point where that's all you want. To do, but if that's all you want to do, it just becomes a job. Yeah. You have to have. Uh, you have to have a personal life in order to be a good storyteller, in order to tell the the, the real life experiences of, uh, you know, of that character, of actually of, of allowing it to be. So give yourself a break. You, you know, if you get a little burned out, take a break. You know, go go find your smile, whatever it is, you know. Kate wanted to know, why at the audition, doesn't it start by telling the... Um, let me rephrase this. Why don't you uh, tell the actor the director's vision in order to help them with direction? A lot of times we don't know the director's vision. We know the director, we know what the director's looking for, but a lot of times we are waiting for the actor to show us how to play that character. And and a lot of times, a lot of times the director is still trying to find it and wants the actor to come in and give him ideas. So it's not really my job to tell the actor exactly how to play it. Now, I might have some notes. Um, the other reason is a lot of times we want an actor to do their job before we give them notes. We want to see what they've come up with, what they're bringing, because that's the creative part of it. So we don't always, you know, if, if I have specific things from a director, yeah, of course I'll tell an actor, you know, what those are. But I usually will tell that after they've created their part of the story and then try to tweak them instead of trying to tell them how it should be played before that. Though my job is not to coach the actor. My job is to find what's right for the script and right for the director. My job is not to make the actor, you know, mold the actor's story. The actor comes in with the idea and then we go from there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, th I think that's clear. Um, Terry asked, getting noticed. Seems to be one of the biggest hurdles for actors, regardless of how good they are. Any tips on how to get your attention? You know, it, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, doing crazy wild things and sending me, you know, weird notes, not the way that. It's really looking for a professional <laughs> actor. Yeah. We watch you. Every time you come in into audition, every time you self-tape, every time... We, we make notes about the, the actor. We make, we actually, my, my associate and I, we, we literally go through and we make notes about them. We kind of look at what they're doing. We've watched actors for years. I mean, I've watched actors for almost 30 years and I've watched actors start from nothing and kind of build up their career. I've watched actors who were really good at front at the, at when they first started and then they just stopped acting and they don't really want to do it anymore. We kind of watch it through the time. So every audition you have isn't just an audition for that project. That's an audition for that casting director who might have four or five projects coming up 
who might, you know, so think of it in the terms of everything you do, every time you're on a set, every time you're in a play, every time there, your people are watching you and learning how you are as a professional actor. So that that's kind of what we look for. And that's how we really get attention is those are the people that we look for is the people that are always consistently coming in, being professional, making their decisions, playing their moments. And that's what we look for all the time. Yeah. And I think uh, especially in a um, smaller regional market, w when yeah. you are at that level of professionalism, it especially stands out. Um, yeah. So, um, I like this one from Kristen. Hey Beth, I submitted a self tape to you that in hindsight was awful. I wish I could take it back. Just wondering if you give actors a second chance. Always. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what project it was and the project isn't happening right now anyway. But, um, um, I, you know, I get that actors have bad days. I get that actors have make mistakes and that they come in um, unprepared sometimes. I don't like it, but it happened. I get that self tapes sometimes are not that thought out. Um, so I do understand we have our bad days. I don't, if you consistently do it, then I start worrying about you. But if you have a day you come in and it's just not clicking for you and you can't seem to get the scene out, I might even, if I know the actor, I might even have him come back another day and say, look, hey, it's not working today. Let's see if we can get you in another day. But, um, you know, it's not a one time you're done thing for me because I need actors. I need people who are pursuing this in this state. I need people who actually really want to do it. So I do realize that there are times that you just kind of, you trip all over yourself, you know, and, and that unfortunately you probably aren't going to get that project, but I'm still going to give you another shot at another project. I, I always do. I literally do not have a black book of actors. I will not see do not have that. So, yeah. um, I want to know any advice for seniors. For seniors? Yeah, for seniors getting into acting or senior actors or any, you know, that's kind of a, yeah. I, I don't know about other things, but in this market, we really need that group. So go do it. <laughs> you know, go do a play. Do whatever you can. Take a class. If you've never before, start. Because there's not that many seniors acting in, in the state of Utah. So go do it. That's the best advice. Just Find yourself an agent, get into a class, whatever it is that you, you know, wherever you're at in your career, but make sure that, you know, if you're going to do it, just start getting yourself out there, get a headshot, get going. Side note, uh, my grandma who lives in Utah um, has asked me numerous times, how do I get cast in something? And so, uh, yeah, I'll, <laughs> send I'll, me your headshot. I'll, yeah, I'll send my <laughs> grandma's headshot. Um, so... From Aaron, how likely is it somewhat, uh, for someone to get hired off of an open casting call? Is it hard to get an agent when you have very little experience? So let's start with the first one. So, you know, sometimes you're doing an open call and, and maybe that's, you know, more public, right? And you have to, you put that on social media and you're looking for something. Right. Um, and, and again, that's depending on the project. Sometimes, like sometimes I'll get like a photo shoot or a commercial that is looking for real people <laughs> looks and there's not a lot of acting involved as other than, you know, and 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 so those are the more open. But most of the time, we're looking for professional actors on the bigger projects. We're looking for actual trained professional actors who have been pursuing a career. And so, if you've just starting, starting is a good place. It's a good place, to newbie. It's good because we haven't seen you before. But get into some classes, get in some training, do a play. Work yourself into an agent before you just jump into coming and trying to read in front of a casting director because we, we you want to make sure that you're showing your best professional side when you start meeting us. So you should actually find an agent, get that stuff in before you start seeing us um, because we you know we can't do much with you if you're if you don't know what you're doing. We're not there to to teach you. We're not there to coach you. So make sure that you kind of get some training behind you. It doesn't matter where you're at. And then when we see a new actor, one of the things I tell new actors in a, in a regional market is directors love to discover new talent. So if you're good and you've been working on your career and you don't have a lot on your resume, a director doesn't worry about that so much if you're good and you love to discover new talent, especially on you know smaller bit parts. They love to like give people a shot. So don't worry about that so much. Let me uh, ask... How important is your headshot? What is the industry standard now, in studio or outside? Um, I prefer in studio just because it's easier to look at. Uh, outside, just 
it can be outside, but you're going to be, you know, if you're going to ton of stuff in the background and, and have to be distracting, it's, it's kind of, it's a moot point. We can't see you and you're distracting. So, so I prefer in studio, but you know, it, I'm really only looking for a good hood headshot that looks like you. I'm not looking, you know, I need to know what the actor looks like. And that's how important it is, is I literally will go through a headshot and go, does this person fit the role I'm looking for by their looks? I have no, I may be looking at your resume too, but at point right when I'm looking at your headshot, I'm looking at, does this person look like this character? Does this person play what we're looking for? And that's the question I ask. And then uh, if that's the answer, yes, okay, physically you match the description, physically you match what we're looking for. Then I start looking at experience, especially if I don't know you. I start looking at your experience and looking at, you know, how, how big of a role is it? How, how qualified are you? Those kind of things. So a headshot is really important because it's how we see you in that, in that project. It's how we get to know what you look like. And we see so many people that, you know, they start to blend. So we have to literally look at your headshot. So, yeah. So it's important, uh, very important. And you need to look like your headshot. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Dapper said, let's say I get paired to audition with another actor and they are terrible. How does that for you? (laughs) Um, uh, the best way I've ever heard it and the best way I think about it is, look, um, we understand that could happen and that a parent who's not prepared or not ready, um, just do your job and do the best you can because that will notice you more. That'll make us notice, okay, you still stuck in it. You still did your job. You still did that. Let's try to pair this person up with somebody who's more prepared. So that happens a lot. And so the way to do it is just make sure you're doing your job because if the other actor isn't doing their job, we'll see it and we will match you up with somebody who is actually a better fit. Um, Carolyn wants to know, and that, you know, there's a lot of background in Utah and she wants to know, yeah. how do I move up from background to getting in front of you? I do not have representation. You got, again, uh, start training. Um, background work is great, and I love the fact that people do background work, but it's not going to get you a job as an actor. You need to actually get on your feet, do lines, do, you know, actually act. So background work will get you on a set, it'll get you kind of custom to what goes on there, but it's not going to train you as an actor. So you need to make sure you train, you need to make sure you pursue the art of acting, not just standing in the background. And believe me, we need background talent all the time. And I have, I, I admire everybody that does that's long hours and it's hard, work. but absolutely you need to understand that you're not gonna book speaking lines because you did background work. You're gonna book speaking because you went in a regional play and you learned how to do it. And you went and did a film short for the university and then you went and built your, your resume and then you took some acting classes and you learned how to do it and, and you became a professional. Michelle wants to know, um, I might reword, but she said, do multiracial actors get a lot of work here in Utah? Um, yes. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're always looking cast almost everything we do. So, and we're always looking for all kinds of types and, and ethnicities. Um, going along with that, Rachel wanted to know if an actor... Um, comes on with an accent does that bar them from getting the gig or you know is that a hindrance if i have accent? that's going to be script dependent um you know about the region about what we're looking for i i recommend actors come in because they have a you know good irish accent that they put on an irish accent just because that's not a character choice but it, but if, it, if, if it's required that there's an irish accent and you're good at it great um use the accent you have if you if you have an accent it might work for character. I mean, you, once we get to know you, we actually know you have an accent, and so we will actually try to fit you into roles that you that you fit, that you can get. But don't be afraid of it. Um, if you have a heavy accent and you don't speak English very well, really work on, on getting, you know, a, a less than that if you can. But absolutely, accents aren't a bad thing, but don't put them on just to put them on. I guess that's the best way to put it. You, you, it's going to be dependent on the script. It's always dependent on the story and the script. Um, this question comes up every stream we do, and it came up a few times here. So, uh, and I depend on one casting director to the next, uh, but Andy wants to know, do you like getting postcards from actors or are there other ways that they can keep you updated on what they're working on? 
I don't actually like it um, just because it gives me up to date about what people are doing. I, I, uh, I mean, I find it at all. I, I, you know, it was funny when I was doing High School Musical three. I've got thousands of, of, you know, and and that's not, you know, so you do get lost in the shuffle eventually when it's like that. But I don't mind it at all. I think, you know, I'd love updated. Uh, I love getting up to what I'm doing and, and, you know, hey, I'm doing a play. I'm doing, you know, that kind of stuff. I, you know, I, locally in a regional market, I need people who are working. So I love seeing that they're doing it. Um, but to think, you know, you're not most of the time, i got to be honest, that, that postcard's going to end up in, you know, the trash bin. It, it, we can't keep them all. So don't waste a ton of money doing it. Don't, you know what I mean? But if you want to give someone a reminder or shoot them an email, I, I like it. But again, make sure you know what the casting director's like. Sometimes we get overwhelmed. And and we sometimes we don't even get messages. Like, I get messages sometimes on Facebook or whatever it is. And sometimes I don't get to them until for six months because it's just too busy. So... Just, just stand that. We're not trying to be rude. It just gets overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a busy life. Um, yeah. Sugar Mike uh, asks: Is memorizing the lines for an audition important, or um, is reading the lines off the script fine? Uh, I guess. Okay. okay, I'll let you go ahead. I have a good answer for this, <laughs> and, and it's so funny because honestly, I cannot, as a casting director rules are when we're doing a union show i can't require you to be a memorizer call a screen test and i'm supposed to and this is what i tell actors all the time but here's the caveat you think those actors that are coming in for your job aren't going to be pretty much off script and know those lines inside and out i'm not saying they're completely memorized i'm saying they know that scene inside and out and they know exactly where everything is so they they prepare they really prepare so understand that's what you're coming against if you're great at doing a cold read and you want to risk it, that's up to you. I can't require you to be completely off book, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's really difficult to compete with people when you're looking down here and they're straight on camera and they can they know their lines. That's my best advice. Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, uh, eliminating distractions like that is always good during an audition. Just like so that yeah. you as a casting director and, are just and again, focusing again, on the performance. There are times that we hand you sides late. Like there are times you get an hour we know where you're not going to be completely off book at that point. We know that, yeah. but, and we're not asking you to be, but you have to understand we're trying to, when we see a good actor, we want to help you get the job really well. So a lot of times an actor will come in on it and they'll be cold Bob, and I'll say, look, can you take some and really get that down so we can keep your eye line up and so we can make sure this works. So, you know, um, Tim asked how important the actors attire during an audition. So a wardrobe. commercial wise, it's very important because um, you have what they call the client in a commercial. And a lot of times the client is like a businessman that's trying to make a commercial with with an ad agency and with a director and everything else. So that becomes really important in commercials because they may want you to wear something very specific. And you should ask your agent about that if they do. If they don't, then you should kind of wear something similar to what they would wear. The best I've ever heard for for like film auditions and stuff is wear what that character would wear to an interview. So if you're auditioning to be a doctor, wear something that's business, you know, if you're auditioning to be a scrub or you know, being a construction worker, I wouldn't bring, I mean, you know, you don't need to bring a shovel and all this stuff. You need, you need to kind of fit with the character, but you don't need to be it. Now, some actors like it. Some actors really want to dress as the character. That's, if that's your, if, if that's the way you work, then do it. But understand, I don't need to dress up in a period piece to come in to show me that you can play, you know, a night, a 1600s, you know, nurse, you know, I, you don't need to, we, you know, directors are creative. We can kind of picture you. A lot of times the director really wants to have the say on what the wardrobe's going to be. So you don't need to do that. Raphael asked, is it okay to be asked your age when auditioning if you're not a minor? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's not supposed to. You're, right. you're, uh, again, I tell actors this all the time. I mean, one of the answers you get all the time from a, a part actor is, is there, and how old do you need me to be? But, um, really, we're actually supposed to ask what your age is. We're not, we're, we're legally, we're supposed to say, you know, if you're over 18, we're supposed to do that. That's kind of our job to figure out what age range you play and to figure out if you fit the character. I, I've worked on D Disney Channel shows where someone playing 15 years old was 23. You know, and 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 you wouldn't know that, but you know, unless they told you. Yeah. So it's not 
but you do get directors and you do get people in it. And this is, you know, that, that really want to know. And if you feel like you want to tell them, that's fine, but you don't have to, it's not required. Um, and, and we shouldn't be asking, honestly, we shouldn't be asking. Yeah. And, and with the role descriptions, it's always, you know, the age, to an, age. Or, an age range or age to portray. Yeah. And they're looking at you and looking at your audition saying, can they portray this character who happens to be this age? Um, exactly. And, and that's our job. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. And, and like you said, a lot of people look their age. It's all exactly. all, all over the place. So it, it shouldn't matter as much. And it, it, it is um, weird to get asked that during a casting. Um, so we got... Uh, a couple more that I'm going to bring in here. One second. I'm having a hard time picking like new questions. There's just so many good ones. Um, I did have, uh, I, I saw a, a couple questions regarding um, representation. Um, okay. So just in general, how important is representation and you don't have to mention anything, in, you know, specifically in, in uh, your market. But um, is there? Do you hold certain agencies in higher regard than others? Was one of the questions that was asked. You know, I don't. If I work with the agency, I don't really hire the, hold certain agencies in higher regard than the others um, because I work with them. I'm, if, I'm, if you know, if, if if they're a legit agency doing legit agency work, and in a regional market, you get people who don't do that, uh, and so I don't right. work with. I hopefully don't work with Bob agencies and the people that are scamming people. I try not to. I try that with a passion. Yep. Um, but and so I just don't work with them. But I, you know, in the realm of the agencies I do work with, I do. I think they all bring something to the table. They all have different talents. They all have different things. Some of them have stronger categories of certain, you know, certain actors, and some of them have it stronger on other sides. So, no, I don't. But representation is important for an actor, in my point of view, for you. I mean, you want an you want an agent that will get you out, an agent that believes in you. And so, a lot of times, actors ask me, "Well, what's the best agency?" The best agent is the one that gets you out and believes in you. It may not be the biggest one that has the most people. It may be a smaller one. It may. It depends on where your career is. You may want the biggest one, and it may be that it works out great. But you've got to also be able to communicate with that agent, have that agent believe in you, and have that agent want you to get you out. If your number, you know, in a regional market, these take a lot of people. And if you're number 25 on their list in that category, you're probably not going to get out. But if you're in a smaller agency and you're number three, you might. You know, so yeah. you have to think about that in those terms. I, I, I love all the agencies I work with. I think they're all terrific, and I think they all bring something to the table. But I, but absolutely, an actor and agent relationship is up to the actor and agent, and they need to work those things out. It's really not up to me. The agent represents you, so make sure they're representing. Make sure that they are there for you. Um, I, I, I will deal with any agency. They, you know, the agent, any agency that will represent their people and actually fight for their people. So that's how I look at it. No, it's, that that's great to hear. Um, we talked about in a, a previous live stream with a, an agent the difference between submitting and pitching. So Lisa has a question: How important is agent pitching, or does that even have any weight? It has a lot of weight. Um, if an agent, um, in, first off, if I if I'm the one I'm looking for, and an agent calls me and says, "Hey, you really need to see so and so." I will really seriously take a look at it because, you know, I'm working with the agencies and they may have somebody. If they just willy nilly pitch everybody, if they are calling and say, you need to see so and so, and I look at them and they're like not even right and they haven't even read the description, then I start worrying about the agent. But, but most of the time, yeah, pitch is really important because, you know, a lot of times we get submissions and a lot of times in a local market, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of the actors already. I don't need them pitched to me. But if somebody moves into the market who's new, but is well trained and really good. I need that agent to call me up and say, "You need to see so." I need that, so it's part of the agent's job. So pitch isn't a big deal. It's a, it's important. I've uh, seen some questions that are talking about how everything is going to look post COVID, which a, a lot of us don't yeah. know. Um, but right. curious if you have any um, thoughts or how you think castings will be different once we start doing in-room auditions again and you know things start to slowly get back to normal 
I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work because I have no idea. But I do know um, we're going to have to bring in people spread apart more. Um, so there'll be uh, it, when it, it, when it comes to live auditions, I don't think you know I'm going to have to figure out how to do this with SAG. But how do you do a sign-in sheet? I mean, we're going to have to figure that out. Uh, you have everybody sign in on the same sheet and touch that at the same time. Actors will have to bring their own sides. We can't be sharing the sides with everybody. Um, you know, that the, for live auditions, it's going to be difficult. How do we pair people up until, you know, how, how do you do that? I don't know how to do that yet. So there I have questions that aren't answered yet that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I think there will be more Zoom and more self-tapes being done um, before any, any live auditions. Um, I, I do think there's ways to do it. Um, we want to be safe. We want to make sure we keep people safe. And we want to make sure we fashion. I mean, maybe I, I've even thought maybe to check in for your audition that you use your phone so you don't have to sign in on the sign in sheet and you don't have to touch a computer and you don't have to do those kind of things. So who knows? This one, you, you touched on this before when we were talking about regional casting, but just in case people came in late, um, I, I think this is good to talk about a little bit more. Um, so Kim said it's like a back on work here in San Francisco. And even when big productions come in, the principals seem to be cast elsewhere. Does that mean we need to audition elsewhere to get bigger roles? Um, yes, and again, it's going to be the casting director that you're working with and the person that's fighting for you on that. So yes and no. Um, I've worked on shows where we've gotten the, 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 you know, the only person we didn't get in the whole show was the name actor. And we cast everybody out of the region other than the name actor that was selling the show. And it, and even sometimes we get, you know, we have a couple name actors that live out here in the state. And so sometimes we get them on the show. So, um, you know, I don't use it as an excuse. But, yeah, you definitely need, if you really want to start reading for bigger and bigger roles, you're going to have to go to markets that have those bigger roles and have, do a lot more casting because there's a lot more opportunity. That's the problem with a small market is, that's why I, I hope and I, I believe hopefully Utah will grow to a point where there's a lot more opportunity. But if you're not getting the opportunities, then you're not getting noticed. And if you're not getting noticed, you're not going to get those bigger roles that they require name or somebody who, who has somewhat of a recognize, recognizability. So that's the problem with that is you want to build an audience. You want to build people. You, know, you want to build all that so that you can get those bigger roles. Erica wants to know, because we talked about this regarding High School Musical a little bit, how important is it to have a dance agent if you're an actor that dances and sings? Uh, you dance, if you're going to be, if, if you dance and sing, again, it depends on your regional market. It depends on your market. A lot of the out here in a market in like Utah are you for everything. Um, but if you, you know, but I also have a lot of talent out here that have an agent here, but they also have a dance agent in LA because they're such good dancers. So, uh, it's important to be represented for what you do. So I don't know, Erica, if you're from Utah or not, but out here, not so important because it's not really any specific dance. There's not enough dance for an agency to make a living doing only dance. But there are agencies that represent dancers and actors. But in Los Angeles, in a bigger market, you're going to want that specific thing because that's what they're going to represent you for. So it depends on where you're at. Um, probably have a question for one or maybe two more. Thanks for doing this, by the way. This has been, yeah, yeah, this has been awesome. We're getting so many good questions that um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so hopefully you are as well. I'm having a good time. <laughs> so um, Kate wants to know, I look a famous person. Is that a hindrance uh -huh. for me as an actor? Like I, wow. I'm a lookalike, basically, or people say I look at you know, this person. Never, the only time I've seen a problem, and again, I'm only going from my experience, is that the actor that you're working with on that film, you look exactly like. So, you know, we, I have run into that problem where we're running, we have our lead actor and it's so-and-so, and another actor comes in and looks a lot like that person, so we, it's them in that. But I've never had it be, hey, we're going on a show. So and so looks like so and so who's in that other project. I've never had that be a problem. But it could be. But I wouldn't. It's not something you should worry about. It's you know what I mean. Because if you're coming in and doing a good job, they're going to want to hire you anyway. You know, it, it might hurt you a little. I, it's not something I would worry about. Awesome. And I will ask you one more question, and then okay. we'll let you. Know. 
Uh, so let's see if there's anything in particular. Right. Well, this is the newest one, so I'm going to take it from Misha. Um, she asked self tape advice, pet peeves, reader, etc. So I'll tell that and just you know one thing that you could, one piece of it that you could give to every actor watching right now. What would that be? Self tapes or about anything? Let's just yeah. say self tapes. First off, please <laughs> use a reader. Um, we're looking for reactions. And so what people do, we send them sides that have people speaking to them and then they try to make it a monologue. Don't do that. It's just, it, we don't get the actions we need. Um, absolutely try to have someone read the lines with you, whoever it is. Um, uh, um, I know people record and play back their own lines and that kind of works, but it's a little bit weird, um, especially because you're hearing the same voice. Be careful with that. Have a plain background. Don't have stuff in the background. Make sure it's just a you. Shoot it at eye level. Um, take a class about self-taping. It's going to be a big deal. I mean, right now, the way things are looking, there's going to be a lot more self-tapes than even there was before this. So you understand how to self-tape. Um, eye lines are important. You know, where you're putting your eyes, what you're looking at when you're doing that. Make sure you understand that. But the biggest thing is understand, even though we're watching on tape, we need to see you. We need, you know... I've had people, they, it's too dim or it's too dark or it's too distracting or they you know, those things, remember, we're sending this off to the client, you know, for like a director to watch to see if they even want to meet you in person. And so if we're saying, if, if I pass on a self tape, it's got to look professional. And so a lot of times people are like, I mean, I've seen people shoot their self tapes in a bathroom. I'm like, I don't want to know you're in a bathroom. <laughs> I don't want to know you're, you know what I mean? If you, if you, if that's the only room you got to do it, great. Put up something so we don't know it's a bathroom, <laughs> you know, put, put it, you know, wherever it is, but, but make sure that you, you know, that it looks professional. If you can get into a studio, great. Um, you know, I, I don't want everybody to have to pay for it. So that's, but make sure it looks professional. And so get some feedback, shoot some stuff, get some feedback on how you're doing it. Get a decent camera. It doesn't have to be an overly expensive camera. Get something that picks up your no, your your levels of sound and things like that. It's important because it, you have to look professional in order to get these jobs. Awesome. Amazing advice. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff, Thanks for, for your time me. today. This is awesome. Um, I'll speak for everyone when I say this was uh, a lot of great information. We had a lot of fun. So appreciate it. And to everybody watching, we will talk to you next time. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Jeff.